one quick example. So in, in the algorithm that comes from the randomized controlled trial, if you're a man and you're over age 63, you should be on a high intensity statin. The, the number needed to treat to prevent one cardiovascular, so if you treat to a intensity statin, 12 of them will develop diabetes from the statin and 40 of them will stop exercising or moving very much from the statin. And so the number needed to harm is actually lower than the number needed to treat. And yet the randomized controlled trial says as its result that anyone over 63 who's male should be on one of these drugs. Mm. So, um, so that's my example of why it, the kinds of evidence that we're producing are, is not, are not necessarily good evidence. That's fascinating. And also something I've noticed that I've written about a lot is, uh, is there's this modern society is, is, uh, is likely to believe anything that is produced it, uh, more recently than, than a study that happened before. Um, you know, so it's, it's, uh, once they say a new study, uh, you know, and, 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 and I think both of you, we don't need to go into all the, all the problems, but there's, there's problems in a lot of studies with their design or who's, funding it or, or you have it there's a lot of politics involved right i mean and uh uh and it seems like the new is generally always believed unless it's too radical like i, I just heard actually from my doctor <laughs> who also is a holistic doctor dr stephen weiss and uh uh, now in Santa Fe, he used to be in Albuquerque, um, and and uh, he was considering uh, giving me uh, niacin um, to uh, uh, lower, uh, you know, my bad cholesterol or, or whatever, or raise the good cholesterol. I, I'm not even sure which. Um, and uh, and then uh, we were just about to do that, and then apparently there's a study that just came out. That shows that uh, men over 60 who, uh, uh, who haven't taken statins are better not to have. I mean, I would never take statins, actually, but, you know, but I was considering niacin. So it's, it's, uh, uh, how do you... How do you deal with that evidence even, you know, with your patients or with your colleagues when, when studies change? How, how, do you, how do you deal with that incoming information? Well, I think one tree does not make a forest. Mm. And, and so one study does not make the truth. And also, I think we have to bring in um, people to the equation, and I think this is what Dave was talking about, that, that we have to hear people's stories and we have to find out how they feel about their lives and treatments that they could undergo, um, what their beliefs are, um, maybe even learn about, you know, their relatives who lived long and well and their relatives who didn't and and begin to personalize the medicine more to the to the stories that that come from that person's family and that person's community and we're so reductionistic in medicine that it's it's almost nauseating yeah. it, it reminds me of there was a, a famous study of a community italian american community in eastern Pennsylvania and they did everything wrong according to the epidemiologists and they lived long and healthy and there came a point 
at which their children started moving away and they stopped living long and healthy and and their risk factors caught up with them and smoking suddenly became dangerous for them and um, being overweight and eating lots and lots of pasta suddenly became dangerous for them and they they developed heart disease and diabetes when they didn't have it before their lifestyle hadn't changed wow. and what it changed was that the social fabric of the extended family and community was falling apart it was disintegrating before their eyes and their children left and there was no longer this prospect of, of growing old with your grandchildren, hmm. you know, aging in place. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful story. So you're, you're really, it doesn't have to be in a Native American community, but when you have a community that is in balance um, and harmony and uh, they have uh, intergenerational uh, uh, nurturance, they tend to be healthier. This is this is uh, regardless of some of these specifics that Western medicine seems to focus on all the time. It makes a lot of sense. It makes total sense to me. I mean, I uh, I know uh, or knew of. He's passed on the spirit world now. But David Pete, who was in Pari, Italy, a little tiny village that. Uh, People had uh, been living in the same place for uh, centuries and very familiar with the land and, and what they grew there. <laughs> and, they, and it was a coherent community, but it also started to, just like you were speaking about, Lewis, the children started to become enticed to move away and things are shifting, not for the better. Um, so it's, it's very difficult. So we... You know, I, so what does it really mean to heal is what I'm or, or to be healthy as uh, I throw it back to you, Dave. What does it mean to be healthy? Again, I think it's an ongoing practice. Um, it's not something you do and are, are done with, but it's really kind of a, a way of life. But it, it, there's this kind of thing within Lewis's story too of like you ask a doctor how would you be healthy and you say well don't drink so much red wine don't smoke so much don't eat so much pasta but if you're in a great community that's so supportive all of those things are part of the liveliness of the community and there's actually health in that so I mean the if we break down what's where does the word health come from it it goes back to roots that have to do with wholeness and holiness and so healing is when something has become separated or broken apart and then figuring out how do you reconnect those pieces? How do you bring that back into um, a sense of, of wholeness? Um, there's a story about Chen Ritzig, the Buddha Chen Ritzig, who vowed to alleviate the suffering of all beings. And so Chen Ritzig you know, practiced and worked for, for years and years and years to alleviate suffering and then looked around and saw there was more suffering than ever. And so having broken the vow, part of the vow was, you know, if I can't alleviate all suffering, I'll burst into a thousand pieces. And the Buddha Amitabha comes up and says, wow, that was a really noble vow. I mean, it was impractical. You're never going to get rid of all suffering. But, you know, let's put you back together and let's give you a thousand hands to better touch suffering and a thousand eyes to better see suffering. And so the healing is really building in the fragmentation for a in a way, it's almost like a, a greater state of complexity um, rather than, than the old state that broke apart, rebuilding the old state into a greater state of complexity. And this is what's missing in medicine a lot is we're trying to get back to a static thing of the past. A lot of medicine is like, this is out of whack. Let's get it back to where it was rather than saying this has changed. Let's look at your, your larger life and see how things are changing in your larger life and see how maybe we can incorporate this change 
uh, almost like in a martial arts thing where energy comes toward you and you figure out a way to work with that energy rather than just to try and stop it and force it back. Um, mm. Lewis, what, what's your, what would you say to that question? Well, you know, I think I agree with Dave that it's about, you know, the word, the closest word in Lakota would be Wichozani, which means harmony and balance. And, and it's interesting because um, we can't live forever, and yet we can be in harmony and balance until we die. And so, so there's a way in which healing and physical health are not necessarily the same. Mm. And, and um, sometimes they are, you know, and, and, you know, we talk about the, the, the medicine circle, which is a, a symbol for the horizon, you know, that, that we want to be in balance with spirit, spirituality, emotion, community, physical body. Um, but we know that we can't live forever. So, so I think the confusion that modern medicine makes is it's all physical. And, and the goal is to live forever. Mm. That's very good. So for both of you, what is the optimal way to die? What is the optimal way to die? Well, my great, my great grandmother said you should die healthy so you can party on the other side. <laughs> and, and so you, you can die healthy. This well, she, she believed that you could. You know, we don't believe that in medicine because we always have to have a cause, you know, a physical cause for everything. Uh -huh. But um, I suppose those people who drop dead, you could say, you know, if you weren't tainted by modern medicine, you could say they died healthy. Um, it it's possible. I mean, I, I almost believe because, you know, I, I had the dubious distinction of setting up a uh, radio interview for uh, Leon Secretaro, grandfather Leon Secretaro, the head man of the Canyoncito Band of Navajo, someone who used to participate in the Language of Spirit Dialogues along with Joseph Rael. Um, and uh, on September, I think it was September 25th of 2008, and the show was on death and dying and you can find it on YouTube Harlem Acosato was the host and it was a beautiful show also uh, I was friends with Harlan and he asked me about people who could speak the, he had a western uh, doctor who was doing a study on, uh, on uh, the physical uh, act of dying on the show also and, uh, and then there was uh, Leroy Little Bear on as well uh, Leon spoke about dying as in Leon had gone to essentially to the other side a year and a half earlier, had a massive stroke and gone to the other side and had visitations with uh, uh, people in the spirit world and then come back and regained his memory and speech by going to sacred sites and having them speak to him again. Um, he was an amazing man. And uh, he said that when we die, that the the energy that's been unfolding in a in a sunwise direction um, just uh, goes back the other way. It goes back the other way. It reverses, and 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 that's what he had experienced when he had had the stroke. But the interesting thing about this to me is that three days later he died, and he was apparently healthy. <laughs> at the time or apparently you know there was no clear you know he didn't seem sick you know um and uh and he also died um ex on september 28th and so there was uh, annual ceremonies that were conducted every year uh, between october 1st through 4th that honored the ancestors and uh at a, at their sacred grounds 
And so he died in a way that people were already en route to go to those ceremonies, which turned out to be a memorial for him that year. But then every